Copenhagen is the heart of Denmark. It hosts 1.4 million people, 23% of the country's population. It is the economic capital of Denmark, the cultural center, and the central government's home. However, Copenhagen is also one of the lowest elevation cities in the world, with much of the city sitting less than 10 meters above sea level. This, combined with its position right along the Orison Sound, puts it at extreme risk from rising sea levels. In the future, it is feared that storm surges could submerge the capital's port and coastal streets, resulting in property damage and loss of life. To solve this problem, the Danish government has been looking for a solution. A massive sea dike has been proposed. However, this would be very expensive and unattractive. Another solution may be hidden in the city's past. Over the last two centuries, Copenhagen has seen a gradual expansion outwards. Not inland, but into the sea. In the 1870s, Copenhagen began work on Refselum, an artificial shipyard island just off the city's coast. Two decades later, the new harbor area Norhaun was founded just to the north. Then, in the 1930s, the island Provstenen was expanded in the south. In the 1990s, Refselun expanded, followed by Provstenen and then Nordhaun. Nowadays, Copenhagen has over 5 square kilometers of reclaimed land off its coast, which serve as critical industrial and maritime centers. What if, instead of building a seawall, Copenhagen looked to its past and built a whole new island off its coast that would protect the city from storm surges while also creating new land for development? Well, in October 2018, the Danish government introduced such a concept, a natural extension of Copenhagen into the sea called Lunetahorn. In 2019, designs were released by the companies Koei, Arkatima, and Tredje Natur, and in 2020, feasibility studies were conducted. Then, on June 4, 2021, the Danish parliament voted on the project. In an 85-12 to 12 landslide vote, the project was approved. Lunetaholm will be a 275 hectare or 2.8 square kilometer island off the coast of Copenhagen, between Norhaun and Refselun. It will be elevated high above sea level and will be surrounded by a 7 kilometer long breakwater. On its eastern coast, Lunetaholm will have an undulating coastline meant to harbor marine life with sand and pebble beaches bordered by a 78 hectare green coastal landscape. Inland, the island will be nature-based, with plenty of green areas, parks, and housing developments that will eventually host 35,000 people. In addition, Lunetaholm will have work for between 12 to 20,000 people. Just north of the island, the water will be deepened to secure the safe passage of vessels between the port of Copenhagen and the Orison Sound. As part of the project, an underwater metro line will be built, linking the island to the rest of the city. An eastern ring road will also cross the island, and a tunnel will eventually link it to the E20 highway and onto Sweden through the Orsund Bridge. The Lunetaholm Island is estimated to cost 20 billion Danish kroner, or 2.4 billion US dollars. It is being managed by Bayernhaun, an organization half-owned by the city of Copenhagen and half-owned by the Danish Ministry of Transport. Its name comes from the French word lunette, or little moon, and the Danish word holm, which means a small, low-lying island. The project will be constructed in two phases, with a smaller first phase just east of Refshelun, and a larger second phase northwards. Land reclamation is planned to be completed by 2035, and all construction developments are to be finished by 2070. Lunetaholm will have some major benefits for Denmark. First of all, it will serve as a flood barrier, protecting the city of Copenhagen from both temporary storm surges and permanently higher sea levels. In addition, it will help alleviate the city's housing shortage. Copenhagen, which has seen real estate prices skyrocket over the past decade, is now suffering from a housing shortage, and as of 2021, is the 16th most expensive city to live in in the world. Lunetaholm, with its plentiful new land for housing developments, will help relieve this shortage, making living costs cheaper for Danish citizens. In addition, the project's new infrastructure will speed up transit times around the city, further benefiting residents. Not only will Lunetaholm help citizens, it is projected to be very profitable for the Danish government. It's believed that the island could generate a profit of up to 440 million US dollars, solely off land sales. And even better, the government will actually be paid to build the island. Bayernhaun will receive payments to remove surplus earth from building and infrastructure projects around Copenhagen, which they will then use to build the island. 
Lastly, the island will serve as a pleasant green recreation area for the residents of Copenhagen and a new site for the city's 10 million annual tourists. Despite all this, Lunetteholm is also very controversial. First of all, citizens have complained about the project's construction. Since the island's soil will be transported through Copenhagen, it will directly impact the city's residents. To move the 80 million tons of soil, it's been estimated that 350 truck journeys will be required every day during construction, resulting in traffic and pollution. In addition, there will be excavators, large machinery, and lighting all around the harbor area for several years, resulting in noise and light pollution. Another complaint is that the island will close off views of the Orison Sound for properties near the coastline and for the iconic Trekroner Fort. Moreover, many fear that while Lunetteholm will supply more housing, it will all be high-cost luxurious properties, blocking out ordinary citizens from the island. Furthermore, the Museum of Copenhagen has warned that the project could destroy or bury archaeological and historic ruins in the harbor. Most importantly though, the project could actually harm the environment. It will destroy local marine habitats and disturb fish and bird populations. It could impact the water quality and flow in the Orison Sound, which is already in a fragile state. And while there have been environmental assessment reports for Lunetteholm, protesters claim that they only cover the construction of the island, and not any of the infrastructure or housing developments on it, which will use large amounts of concrete and could increase car usage. Activists have protested against the project, claiming that the government is greenwashing it. They claim that the government's only goal is to make money off real estate sales to pay off its debt for past infrastructure projects such as the Copenhagen Metro, and that there is no real intention of protecting the environment. Nevertheless, Bayenhaun dismisses these claims, stating that all potential impacts have been researched and shown negligible. As a result, the project is advancing quickly. Contract tenders and marine and archaeological feasibility studies are to be held in late 2021. The breakwater is set to begin in 2022, along with dredging of the harbor area. Then, in 2023, land reclamation for Phase 1 will begin, followed by Phase 2 in 2025. After that, buildings will rise from the sand, and Lunetteholm will be born. The Danish government sees the project as a green and profitable way to climate-proof the city. On the other hand, protesters see it as a profit-motivated construction scheme with environmental repercussions. What do you think? Is Lunetteholm a good idea? Let's talk about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe for more videos very similar to this one. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.